All right, folks, gather around. I got a real strange and sad story for you today. It's about a man named Ricky McCormick. Now, Ricky was a troubled soul. From a young age, he was behind in school and had a wild imagination. People close to him suspected he was schizophrenic, and he often seemed lost in his own thoughts. Despite this, Ricky managed to have four children, though he never settled down and got married. Life dealt Ricky some tough cards. He got arrested and served jail time for statutory rape. After it was discovered two of his children were father with a girl under 14. After he got out, things didn't get any much easier for him. He worked low paying jobs, including pumping gas, and relied on a disability check to get by. Ricky also struggled with his health. He had a chronic heart and lung problems, which were made worse by his smoking and being homeless. He was a frequent visitor to local emergency rooms and hospitals seeking treatment. Despite his struggles, Ricky remained a mystery to those around him. We have little known about his personal life or relationships. Ricky was a man who struggled to make ends meet. He had never finished high school and his intellectual capabilities were limited, which made it difficult for him to find good pay and work. Despite this, Ricky tried his best to provide for himself and his family. He worked as a gas station attendant at a local Amoco gas station, but even this job was a struggle for him. Ricky preferred the overnight shift so he could sleep during the day but he struggled to stay awake and often made mistakes on the job. In addition to his job at the gas station, Ricky also worked a side hustle for his boss, Baja Hamadala. Ricky would often frequently travel to Orlando, Florida to pick up large quantities of marijuana for Baja to sell. It was a risky and illegal job, but Ricky needed the extra money. His family suspected that Ricky was scared after his most recent trip to Orlando in mid-June of 1999 but they, they never learned the true reason for his fear. On June 25th, Ricky visited the Forest Park Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri, because he claimed he needed a checkup. Ricky suffered from chronic heart and lung problems, so he was admitted for a few days for observation. As the doctors declared him fit to leave, Ricky was least last seen stopping by a gas station on the morning of June 27th. Little did we know, this would be the last time anyone would see him alive. On June 30th, 1999, a woman was driving through a rural area near West Alton, Missouri, when she noticed something unusual just off the side of the road near Route 367. She pulls over to investigate and was shocked to find the decomposing body of Ricky McCormick, lying face down in a cornfield. His body it was in such an advanced state of decomposition that the flesh on his hands had rotted to the point where his fingerprints had fallen off and lay in the foliage besides the body. Ricky was wearing dirty Lee blue jeans and a stained white t-shirt. His remains weighed at only 72 pounds. The location where Ricky was found was perplexing to investigators as he lived only 15 miles away and did not have a car. This led them to speculate that Ricky may have been the victim of a homicide. The investigation into Ricky's death was further complicated by the fact that he had been missing for several days before his body was discovered. The medical examiner was tasked with determining the cause of Ricky's death after his body was discovered in a cornfield in Missouri. However, due to the advanced state of decomposition, the examiner was unable to make a definite determination. The weather had been moderate, which led investigators to suspect that Ricky's body had been kept in a hot environment before being dumped in the cornfield. This could explain the advanced decomposition, despite the fact that he couldn't have died more than three days prior to being found. The medical examiner conducted an autopsy, but was unable to find any obvious signs of trauma or injuries that could have led to Ricky's death. His heart and lung problems could have played a role, but without further evidence, it was difficult to say for sure. The medical examiner ultimately concluded that the cause of death was undetermined and that further investigation and testing would be needed to determine the true cause. The discovery of Ricky's body was strange enough. But when investigators found two hand scribbled notes in his pocket, they knew they had another mystery on their hands. The notes were written in a coded language that no one could decipher, with lines of letters, numbers, dashes, and parentheses filling the page. The FBI's Cryptic Analysis and Racketeering Records Unit, as well as the American Cryptogram Association, tried for years to crack the code, but no luck. Even Ricky's family, who claimed he had been writing such notes since he was a child, were unable to make sense of them. 
The notes seemed to be written just days before Ricky's death, adding to the belief that they had some important information about his murder. Despite all the efforts, the notes remained a mystery and a frustrating puzzle for the FBI to solve. The investigation into Ricky's death was full of twists and turns. One of the biggest mysteries was who could have possibly killed him. The police initially had no leads and no idea who would want to harm Ricky. They looked into his past and tried to find anyone who might have a motive to kill him but came up empty. One possibility that was explored was that Ricky's involvement in the illegal drug trade could have gotten him into trouble. Ricky's boss at the gas station where he worked had been known to have picked him up at large quantities of marijuana from Orlando, Florida. It was thought that Ricky may have gotten in over his head with his legal side hustle and paid the price. Another theory was that Ricky's murder was related to his time in prison for statutory rape. While in prison, he had made some enemies, and it was possible that one of these individuals had tracked him down after his release and sought revenge. However, there was no concrete evidence to support either of these theories. And as the investigation continued, the police began to focus on Ricky's family as potential suspects. His aunt and girlfriend both had alibis for the time of his death. But some family members were not as easily ruled out. Ricky's estranged father was one person of interest, as he had a history of violence and had even threatened Ricky in the past. However, like all of the other suspects, there was not enough evidence to charge anyone with Ricky's murder. The mysterious death of Ricky McCormick's remains one of the most difficult unsolved cases in the annals of crime. Despite extensive efforts by the FBI and local authorities, the true cause of Ricky's death remains unknown, and the encrypted notes found in his pocket continue to confound experts. The case is a stark reminder that the answers to even the most profound questions may forever elude us. The death of Ricky is a cautionary tale of a life cut short by a senseless act of violence. R Ricky was a vulnerable individual with limited means who lived on the margins of society. This case is a chilling reminder that the most vulnerable among us are often the most at risk and the justice for Ricky and his family has yet to be solved. One can only hope that with new advancements in technology and in analytical methods and a renewed public interest, the truth will finally come to light and the perpetrator of this heinous crime will be brought to justice. The death of Ricky is not just a mystery, it's a tragedy and, and it's a story that deserves to be solved. So that's going to do it for today's story. If you have any suggestions on what true crime story I should do next, then please leave a suggestion in the comment box. If you like this episode and enjoy true crime and paranormal stories, then please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my weekly uploads. Thank you.